Hi guys, welcome back. So today I have for you a book chat video, which for those of you who are probably new to my channel, you may not have seen one of these before because it's been quite a while since I did one, but it's basically where I chat about a whole heap of books that I've been reading. Sometimes I do mini reviews, sometimes I just kind of mention them and say I really like them. It's probably the worst time to be doing it because I just got a new phone and if you've ever sort of used the Kindle app, you know that sometimes when you change phones, even though you can like download it all across, it kind of stuffs it up. And I've had to kind of try and re-download the books that I've been reading. And I read so much that it's so hard to keep track of things. And the only way I know what I've read recently is sort of in what order they're sitting in in my Kindle. So... I apologize if I'm a little bit all over the place. It's also been a long time since I've done one and I was rambly at the best of times. So um, it's probably going to be exorbitantly, not exorbitantly, that's not the word I'm looking for, exceptionally worse than usual, excessively worse than usual. It's just, it's going to be worse than usual is basically what I'm trying to say. But a lot of you guys have been requesting these. I've seen little comments on all my videos. When are you going to do a book chat video? So... I'm sitting down and doing one for you and maybe once I start this one I can get back into doing them a bit more regularly and therefore they won't be so terrible. Anyway, I'm going to just jump straight into the first one that I have at the top here. This one is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Mass? Um, this one was recommended for me, um, recommended to me by some of you guys, and it's a series that I guess you could say it falls into the fantasy, young adult fantasy kind of realm of books. It's based on a young girl, I think she's about 18 at this point, but she was brought up as an assassin and was a really, really great assassin. One day she was captured and has been basically put into this sort of slavery mine thing that she's doing and one day a the prince comes along and takes her away from this and takes her back to the castle where she has to compete against other sort of assassins and villains to become the king's champion and therefore basically become the king's murderer for whenever he needs somebody taken out the king is not a very nice person and this is kind of set in a time that's not particularly I guess it's not really told whether it's sort of ancient times or current times or a different world. There is a little bit of um, a magical element mixed into it. It kind of reminds me a bit of the Game of Thrones style kind of world. So it has that medieval vibe to it, but then it also sometimes references things that are a little bit more modern. And then it also has that sort of magical, mystical element to it. But what I can say is that it's written really, really well. Those of you who know me know that my general reading habits pretty much stick to contemporary romance novels, whether they be adult, um, new adult, young adult, they generally sit in there. And there is a little bit of romance in this one, but uh, it's not the main point of it. And I just, I've, I've really been enjoying it, even though it's not what I typically read. And I'm actually on to the second book in the series, which if I can bring it up, is called Crown of Midnight. And I believe there's quite a few in the series, and they're decent sized books. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, maybe a little bit in the fantasy genre, um, check those out. Another recommendation for me recently was the Colorado Mountain series by uh, Kirsten Ashley, Kristen Ashley, I always get that wrong. Uh, this one, I think I've read some of her books before, but I hadn't read this series. The first one is The Gamble, and it was about a woman who has is American but has come across, um, she has been living in the UK, has booked a trip to the Colorado Mountains, and the when she went to stay where she was supposed to stay, the owner of the house was actually there, even though he wasn't supposed to be there. And anyway sort of it, stuff in shoes and she ends up staying there with this guy anyway. He basically falls in love with her and it's about her dealing with her ex-fiance and about her meeting all the different people in this like little mountain town and falling in love with this guy and, and also dealing with all these other really, there's a lot of drama in this book, a lot of elements kind of pushed into like a small story. There's a murder, there's somebody who tries to commit suicide, there is... Um, I guess her befriending a whole heap of people and, and taking on all their issues and becoming a matchmaker and, and having somebody after trying to hurt her and it's just it's there's a lot of there's a lot in this story I would say it's a lot for a romance novel but I did enjoy it I actually have downloaded the second uh, book in the series to read as well. Another little trilogy that I read was by Denise Grover Swank. There are three books in the series, The Substitute, The Player, and The Gambler. I believe it's the Wedding Pact series. 
Anyway, this one is based on, or well, each book has is based on three women who, when they were young, I think they, they went to a fortune teller and basically said that they would all get married by their 30th birthday. Well, that's a pact that they made, and the fortune teller said that that would happen, but they wouldn't be married to the person who they were supposed to marry, um, and there would be a lot of drama leading up to the wedding. And basically that is the premise for all three of these books. They're all slightly different. The first one, um, she says yes that she is going to get married, but then she breaks up with the guy but doesn't tell her family and basically another guy steps in and pretends to be this guy and they get married. It's very kind of over the top. I mean, who gets married to somebody who their parents have never met even though they're close to their parents? Stuff like that. Like it's a little bit only would happen in a romance novel kind of thing, but you can look past it. Um, I think the second book was based on one of the girls who's very sort of anti-love. She's a divorce uh, attorney and then she kind of meets the guy who was kind of her, her one true love that kind of got away and he turns out to be a divorce, a divorce attorney as well and they get thrown together and again she ends up with him and then the last one they're kind of friends. Anyway, I'm not going to go in and describe the whole story. This is how these videos end up really really long but if you like that kind of thing, if you, if you just want something that's light-hearted and quirky and maybe not 100% realistic but you don't mind anyway then check out that series by uh, Denise. It is a good one or it's a nice one a couple of books in series that I've kind of already started the first one is that baby by Gillian Dodd and this book has been a long time coming the first one was I think it was that boy and then that wedding and then this is like the third and final sort of roundup of the story which is that baby we've been waiting for this one for a while the series was kind of around a group of three friends two guys and a girl and eventually um, I think the first one was kind of about her picking which guy she was supposed to sort of end up with and it was always kind of her best friend and then the, that wedding was about them getting married and again about their friendship and how that sort of changed as they went along because it started I think it started from when they were quite young kind of moved through high school and then to college and then this one is the couple are married and they are actually both sort of sets of couples are pregnant and it's kind of that that whole drama about that it's, this one's actually quite I guess heart-wrenching it deals with some quite difficult issues about um being hurt and potentially losing the baby and it's kind of told in a story of her talking to the baby or writing a diary to the baby as she's pregnant that the baby could read um, I guess once once the child is older which I actually think is a really nice idea and you know if I'm ever lucky enough to have children maybe I'll do that but it was a really nice conclusion to that series and I know for those of you who, who had read that series and were waiting for it you probably would have been as happy as I was for that to come to or to get that last book anyway. One of my favorite authors Jay McLean released Kick Push which is a book on its own but it actually had ties to I believe where the road takes me it's kind of almost you may I didn't actually realize until I finished the book because I read them so far apart but there are links together and this one was one of those kind of heart-wrenching drama-filled books that you kind of expect from her it's about a guy who I think it's 17 or 16 ends up looking after his baby's son he his girlfriend falls pregnant and then she doesn't deal with it well and, and eventually sort of leaves his parents disown him and he's basically on his own trying to raise this little boy when he's barely old enough he's not even really an adult himself and it sort of talks about the hard times from when the child was first born his son who's really really cute and makes a nice part of the book as well um, to sort of a few years later and he, he sort of gets taken in by almost like a good Samaritan and she her own granddaughter comes to stay and they're a similar age and it's basically about him falling for her as well as I guess her dealing with her own issues and also to dealing with the mother coming back and him just trying to to live his life and get back to his passion which is actually to do with skateboarding which is kind of why it's called kick push and there's a Anyway, there's a whole really nice message to it, really nice sort of um, young adult, new adult romance story with a lot of like heartfelt emotions, so if, if that's something that you're interested in, definitely check that one out. I mentioned this one in a favourites video, but I thought I'd quickly mention it again since we're talking books. This one's Matched by uh, Essie Hall and Angela Graham. This one is kind of like a cross between Big Brother and... The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. It's about a whole heap of people who get put into a house together. Some of them are sort of celebrities and the others are just sort of people that were 
the celebrities could all bring in one person with them and then they get matched to their soulmate and they basically all have to do little tasks together and then at the end of each week or each night or something like that they guess to see who they think should be put up to the test of being soulmates and if they are then they go away and um and go on a holiday together or whatever and then the remaining contestants are still kind of being matched together. Anyway, I didn't think I would really like it because I don't really like Big Brother and I don't really like The Bachelor, but it was written really well. I loved getting like to know all the different characters even though it's written from the perspective of one girl and there's a little bit of a love triangle but not really and in the end once I decided who I wanted to sort of be paired together, I really did end up enjoying the book. Okay, I'm going to try and wrap this up because I'm kind of just picking random books that I, I happen to read, but I feel like this is going to go on forever if I try and talk about every single book I read. I did read a series by, I think it's Lisa B. I hate how I can't... Lisa B. Camps. Um, the series is the Baltimore Banners uh, series, and it's, it's based around a hockey team. I've mentioned before the Tony Leo series that I really like, which is the Nashville Assassins series. Again, based around a hockey team, and that's why I started reading this one. To be honest, I can't remember exactly what each of the storylines were like because it um, has been a little while, but I think I liked it. I don't know if I enjoyed it quite as much, but I read three of the books in the series, so I obviously liked it enough to keep on reading it. And if you do like books based around sporting teams or hockey teams, you have it, have you just like hockey in general? Um, they are romance novels, but there's just a little bit of hockey in them. Definitely um, maybe give these ones a look, see if you like them. The Tony Leo series, which I read over time recently as well, is also in my favourites. That series I've been reading for a little while, and this new one um, by Lisa B. Camps. Other books that I've already spoken about in video, so I won't go into too much, but Until Friday Night by Abby Glines, new series from her, love her stuff. Also, Fallen Crest University, which I think was the fifth book in the Fallen Crest series by uh, Tijan. Really, really like those series. Definitely check them out if you like uh, new adult kind of contemporary romance stories. Until Friday Night is kind of based, it's set in like a small town, kind of southern US state. I can't remember even what, where exactly it was set, but you, if you like that kind of thing, then I think you'll like that one. I kind of always wished that I could have grown up somewhere like that, maybe. I don't know whether I would have liked it, but I don't know, that's that's kind of what attracted me to the books and I'm looking forward to that series continuing. And then I also read a book called Cocky Bastard. Interesting title, this one is by um, it's Penelope Ward and Vi Keeland. This one actually has an Australian hero or main guy in it, so that's kind of what attracted me to it, but it's a guy and a girl that get thrown together. They kind of end up road tripping together, and um, it's sort of about them, I guess, I guess them getting together and their sort of story, and there's, there's kind of a... They, they really work, but they don't also the timing is wrong. So it has it, it's quite long and you kind of get to about 40% through the book and you feel like you've already read a whole story and it's kind of at a point where there's a bit of a, a cliffhanger where they almost have to, to separate. But at the same time, you're only 40% through the book and then you've got still a whole nother sort of set of story to go really that continues on with a little bit of gap in time in between. So I really like that. I felt like I got a decent length story from this book. And the last Kindle book I wanted to mention is The End Game by Kate McCarthy because the author is actually, she's either from Australia or she at least lives in Queensland. So she has definite ties to Australia and she, the actual main girl in this book is from Sydney. She is a soccer player and gets a scholarship to go finish her last year of college or uni in America and it's kind of it's mainly set in America but it has a lot of ties back to Sydney and it's about her kind of falling in love with the football star of that university about them trying to work out what they're going to do with their lives and how they're going to make two careers in um, professional sports work when you've got to be in different parts of the world and also the fact that she kind of misses home and misses her twin brother back in Australia and he's obviously from the US so I just thought it was nice it was really nice to, to read a book from an Australian because I don't tend to read a lot of them and a lot of the books I read are based in America which I enjoy but it's always nice to get a little bit of Australian flavour in the books that I'm reading and I love when they kind of meet when you kind of have different countries and different cultures sort of mixed together. So that is pretty much it for this book chat. I did also read a couple of actual like physical books. I continued on the uh, 
Fool's Gold series from Susan Mallory, which I've been reading for like five or six years now. It is excessive and crazy, but I'm still reading it. Uh, this is the Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Hold Me. She releases about three books for this series every year, and they usually come out in the summertime, or at least the the US summertime. It's Australian winter time, um, and then sometimes it's also a Christmas book as well. I've read a lot of them. I thoroughly enjoy them. If you haven't heard me talk about the Fool's Gold series before and, and want to go back to, um, to read it from the start, there's a lot of books for you to read there. It's a lot of recommendations for you guys, but they're always just really sweet romance novels with a happy ending. They're just lighthearted, something that's easy to read, and I'm looking forward to the Christmas one that's about to come out. Um, I always get that and enjoy that one. So that is it. That is the first book chat back. I think we're up to number like 13, 14, 15. I'm not 100% sure, but for those of you who've been waiting for it, I hope that you enjoyed it and I'm sure that the next one will be better because I will have just hopefully read the books and I'll, I'll remember a little bit more about the storylines. If you have any book recommendations for me, please definitely share them with me in the comments. I do read all my comments and I do take note of all the recommendations and hopefully I'll get around to reading some of the books that you recommend to me. All my social media links will be in the description box below as well as a name and links to all the books that I've mentioned so if you missed anything definitely check out the description box for that info. Subscribe if you are new and I'll talk to you guys all next time. Bye!